believe it's 30 years of these guys? Can you believe that? It's hard to believe. I'd like to thank Eric Lee and Ron Kisford for getting Norb out of retirement. Because, because look what we all would have missed out for the last 30 years if they wouldn't have done that. So give a big hand to Eric and Ron Kisford, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, the motherfucking boys the spring down! say anything more eloquently than time Bob Thompson but I'm just going to point out uh, to, to the obvious fact that since November 2016 there's been really nothing but bad news in America. Nothing but one freaking gut punch after another. Right when you think you get the village idiot deposed, you wind up with some sort of freaking war, then you think you got the war kind of tamped down, and then there's like this bullshit that went on yesterday that NATO, NATO calls already covered and you know in long detail and so on and so forth. So it just sort of seems like for the last five or six years there's been nothing but negativity, nothing but bad news, nothing but yet another sort of sledgehammer blow to the testicles and or ovaries. One jacked up occurrence after another. However, I am here to bring you a small ray of hope. One small cover of opportunity. One light in the darkness of insanity. The good news is, technically we're not an Ashwabanon! never particularly important to Morris and Springer, but I will be goddamn if we are playing in the same town as the fucking Trump store. With that said, all I got remaining to say is, ladies and gentlemen, Boris the Sprinkler.
Roxy. I'm Billy Cranston. I'm the Blue Friggin' Ranger. I'm the master of the Triceratops Megazord. And I'm strangling in my own dealie bobbers. I don't know. What? What about dealie bobbers? Okay, never mind that. Uh, anyway. Anyway, not to keep beating the dead horse and everything. to everybody all right there? He's all right, right? Paul looks like some sort of funky Jiffy Pop. Paul, put the hood up. You look like Jiffy Pop Eminem. But, uh, anyway, I don't think we have to belabor yesterday's events all together too much, for we are here to partay. We have partayed all day long. We will continue to partay. But, uh, ladies, remember, when you are kicking the freaking assholes who are making decisions about your body to the curb in November, as I truly hope you do, please be careful. I don't want you to slip and fall on the sidewalk, sidewalk, yeah, yeah, yeah! cheering Paul number one. That is because they appreciate the majesty of the Triceratops Megazord. And for no other reason. So anyway, the misery was spread around pretty thick uh, this week. 
Our bass player, Mr. Rick Six, lives in the Garden State of New Jersey. I'm not implying that's a cause for misery alone, but if you've ever played a show in New Jersey, one might think to wonder. Uh, anyway, there was some sort of rain or drizzle or drizzling showers. There was dark of night. Dark of night. The brightest day in dark of night, the evil shows get fed. So Rick had his flight booked from, where was it, New Jersey to Chicago? Something like that on Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, we were gonna fly out on uh, the 22nd, and then that got canceled. And then the rebook got canceled after we sat on the runway for like three hours. What did you do, Rick? You were on two planes, they both got canceled, you could not fly to the Midwest to make this, the rock scene. I thought this is a bad deal, this is no good. So then, we had to drive here. Rick himself and his lovely wife drove all the frickin' way here from New Jersey to Green Bay to play a rock and roll show. I'm just saying if the tables were turned, I might be the guy that's just watching AEW wrestling at home with the socks off going, well, playing guy, I did my best, plans canceled, but uh, that's why Rick is a superior human being and by golly that hurt cuts me to the quick, but that's just the way it is.
rock, cheap rock comedy, such as Carrot Top. Huzzah! But I'm a Paul's, Paul, can everybody see your pumped up kicks? Paul's got some pumped up kicks. I am secretly envious of Paul's pumped up kicks, but he does not need to know that. It's a terrible thing for a Power Ranger, especially me, Billy Cranston, master of the Triceratops Megazord, to admit publicly and on stage, but that's the literary boy it goes. Anyway, that was a song perhaps you knew. This is a song that perhaps you don't. The song came out in an Italian 45. That's the country of Italy uh, about 25 years ago. And it, it's got, it, you probably didn't hear it, because by golly, what were you doing in Italy buying Morris 45s? There's probably other things you could do. But uh, all our weird odds and ends tracks, except for our goofy covers, are getting compiled on a compilation album that's coming out on Beer City Records at some point. So you can be able to throw all that vinyl I just sold you away, essentially. Except for the wonderful covers and bullshit. Anyway, nobody really understood this record because I demanded that they put the title of the song in Italian on the sleeve, but most people did not realize it was Italian. In Italian, if you pronounce the name of this song, it's called Centro Te Tredissimo Uomo, which is not immediately apparent to the non-Italian speaker. If you read it, if you look at how it reads, and you're an English speaker and do not realize it's Italian, it looks like it says 113 degree Uomo. However, this is a song that I wrote about a girl who is somebody else's girlfriend, and I wanted her to be my girlfriend. And I figured she had plenty of boyfriends, so if I just kind of bided my time, I would wait out the current occupant of her fancy, and uh, this would allow me to be her 113th man. Oh, 
Thank you in the tradition of plate, plate local pop, cheap pop, something like that. Anyway, it's time for another story. It's time for another story. It involves a sign eventually. Hang on. So, all right. so anyway, way back when, when Rick was in the band the first time for the first spell, we released an album called Mega Anal. On it was a song that we wrote that we thought was actually came up pretty good. The song was called Kill the Ramones. So, so here we are. We're playing in New York City in 1999 at the Continental. Who should be in the audience but Joey Ramone? And we think, you know what? We're gonna be edgy. We're gonna play Kill the Ramones because Joey Ramone is in the crowd watching our band. Which is a really fucking dumb idea, but when you're younger, it's like, ah, it's fucking rad. Right this is so funny. <laughs> So little do we know that Joey Ramone is actually dying of cancer at the time. And a year and a half later, Joey Ramone is dead and we play Killer Ramones in New York City with Joey Ramone in the And we feel like shit and all the karma is sort of weighing on the back of us like Atlas, like the Titan Atlas holding the world. So we feel bad about this and ever since Joey Ramone died on April 15, 2001 or whatever, we never played the song and I'm like, we're not playing that goddamn song again. We're fucking lame, we're stupid, we're gonna burn in hell, etc, 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 etc. Life is but a dream. However, on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of Boris the Sprinkler, we thought, if we just change the song up a little bit, we can reverse the curse that had been placed on all four members of the original Ramones. So if we just take the word kill, and we put the letters backwards, it says lick. So this song is henceforth called Lick the Ramones. And it starts with Mr. Lick Six. Let's go, 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 let's go
Michael Brooks. Thank you, clapping people. That was all perhaps my favorite Boris album, which is counterintuitively called Boris the Sprinkler Sup. I never said we were marketing geniuses. Or have I? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's hard, it's hard to believe that Blue Ranger Billy Cranston, which is me, Blue Ranger Billy Cranston, master of the Triceratops Megazord, is having a bit of a challenging mating season. You recall that episode of Rick and Morty, it's been a challenging mating season for Birdman, if you know what I mean. In point of fact, I'm getting so hard up, Rick Six, I'm going to have to call Mar-a-Lago. Is that right? I'm going to call Mar-a-Lago. You know why I'm going to call Mar-a-Lago? What is that? Well, I heard there's somebody there that sucked Putin's dick for four straight years. Now, I'm not saying that I require that level of service. However, it's just good to know that that level of service exists, yeah. and I wish to do that. I, 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 yeah, so anyway, I called, by the way. I changed my story. I called. It's an audible. And you know what the voice at the other end of the line said? Yeah. Oh, Rick. The voice clear as day, clear as a gosh darn belt, clear as an unmoney Blake said, I want to get to third base with you. I'm gonna go get the gold, 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 I'm g
Goofy on Saucer to Seven. Which doesn't explain why it's Martians. Any anyway, oh, wardrobe change, wardrobe change. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. Somebody talking, I'm using the rooms. Just kidding. Anyway, tonight, tonight, my friends, we are all experiencing the same thing. We are all experiencing the same temperature in the room. It is 23 degrees Celsius tonight in here. Thank you very much. 23 degrees Celsius sounds somewhat half-assed. But we raise it to 24. So anyway, for those who are less discerning in the crowd, this is not the original actual bona fide antler helmet. The answer is, oh wait, yeah. Why is it, aren't you wearing the actual Anishagash bona fide genuine antler helmet? You ask, you ask this question. Okay, you guys don't go to church much. You don't know much about speaking in unison. That's all right. I look into this. The reason I am not wearing the actual bona fide antler helmet is because for the next five years, the actual mystic sacred antler helmet is going to be property of the Punk Rock Museum, which is supposed to open in Nevada of Las Vegas this year. Along with all other kinds of cool shit by Kevin's bass guitar and a bunch of other crap I can't think of. Unless, of course, this is all just a crazy scheme to embezzle, you know, antler helmets and Kevin's bases left and right, and this guy's just gonna run off to some country with a non-extradition treaty throughout the United States. This album was actually donated for the night by Sean Murray. Thank you, Sean, wherever you are. Although Sean Murray is from Sheboygan, he's not in the Lake Hounds, but like the Lake Hounds, he does rock as hard as the Human Torch's diarrhea. So, more questions, and I have answers. I'm asking questions you didn't even know you needed to know. I think. You're saying, Reverend Orb, where the heck did you get the antler helmet in the first place? Don't say it in unison, you guys suck at doing that. Except when you go, hey, then you're good. It was actually given to me by the WAPL morning band, Rick McNeil and Len Nelson, who, no matter what you think of WAPL, these guys are pretty all right. And this is a long time ago they gave it to me, because apparently they had a contest where you were supposed to bring in the weirdest object you could find, and the weirdest one they were going to petition NASA to put on the next space shuttle. And uh, the weird thing is, that helmet didn't win. It was not not the weirdest object, so I don't know what the hell the weirdest object was. I don't even want to contemplate it, but... Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, a year or something ago, Len Nelson lost his job, he's been working there for a million years at WAPL, because on his own personal Facebook page, he said the world was better off without Rush Limbaugh. It's like, well, no fucking shit! That's like a no shit moment. That's not a moment where you clutch your pearls and go, oh my goodness, how could he say such a thing? It's not like saying kill the Ramones before you join your moan for fuck's sake. I mean, give me a break. So anyway, I don't know. So anyway, Len Nelson got canceled by uptight conservative type. So since Len is no longer part of, uh, well, maybe he is. Maybe I'm fucking up his chances to get his job back by yapping my mouth off so long. Uh, anyway, I don't know. In honor of Len Nelson, I'd like to dedicate this song to him. It's called, My Radio Is Telling Me To Kill, Open Parenthesis. No, wait. My Radio Is Telling Me To Lick, Open Parenthesis. The guys on my radio close parenthesis. <laughs>
Well, let's see. Tom already thanked all the band, so we can't kill Tom. Kill, kill time. Because Tom already did that. Whatever. And we can't kill time. Uh, pitching about current events and things like that, because we already did enough of that. We can kind of put that in the pasture. Uh, Rick number six. That is you. That is your full formal name. What is the temperature according to the base thermometer? It is. <laughs> if it's, if it's Paul number two. This is like one of those Boris videos. Paul number one has us made. Where we each like freaking talk for like a minute and a half to give you like a five second announcement. Where I stand here tonight. 76 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels, it always feels hotter than that. Well, what is it in Kelvin? That would make it psychologically more, you know, daunting. I don't know. This hasn't been calibrated in a while. Either. Very well, I understand. Okay. Well, in any event... Oh! Harkening, this is a callback. Remember that song I did that was on, we did, that was on an Italian 45? And I said I wrote it about a girl that was somebody else's girlfriend? Well, she hated Pump No Man, she loved it. In point of fact, I then wrote this song about her when she was my girlfriend. And I also wrote this song about the Port Plaza Mall. It's sort of a combination of the two. You don't really get that combination very often. But uh, I think both were kind of left in smithereens, or at least my relationship with her was. Uh, buried in the rubble of the Port Plaza Mall, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, anyway, we're still going to play this song because... Fuck, man, we need a breather. This song's called I Don't Really Want to Walk to Taco Bell Without You.
Thank you, hockey fans. We wrote that song up on, of course, Green Bay's number one sports team. I'll put the other thing back on. This is squishing my head. The Green Bay game, boys. Are they booing or booing for the bubonic? I'm making noises to amuse the crowd. I had to grab my signage. So anyway, feel free to start bumping away on the old time. Yes, no? Yes, no? Well, anyway, so the deal is, these guys won't start the song, they're obviously ready to ready to cue them into Propal saying, This is a sign. I don't know if you don't know this, maybe you've heard something, but the exclusive company is closing. And what we need in the world is a freaking record store and a drummer who's gonna play the, if nobody wants to play the song. Okay. Alright. Yep. Is, is there some sort of problem? Anyway, there's this song, and we're going to play it as soon as people start playing the song. It's going to happen pretty soon, I guarantee it. Perhaps it's just a photo opportunity for me to hold this. Do I need to sign that says Defrost? Hey! There we go. Anyway, not only do we need a record store, we need a museum. What kind of museum do we need, Green Bay? What kind of museum do we need? That's right! We need a fucking UFO museum! We're sick of being pushed around! We're sick of the Earthmen telling us what we can and can't do with our culture! We're sick of the Earthmen fucking with our bodies! We need a UFO freaking museum! Sometimes! Oh, you get it! Good!
what we need is time machines and abortion. Now when we can go back in time and talk to the moms of these fuckers like Clarence Thomas and fucking end this shit before it even starts. It's like Back to the Future but more with a feminist slant. And if that doesn't work, if LP can't defend a time machine that is usable but will allow it to perpetrate our fucking Grand Master plan, we're going to have to stick with those two standbys that have got us through all these trouble times before. And those two things, brothers and sisters, as you may have heard, are drugs and masturbation. And other people may not come up to you and tell you that, you know, what you need is drugs and masturbation, because you probably figured it out by yourself. But then again... Well, that's fine. All right, I can, I'm a big boy. I can extricate myself from my mess. Anyway, thanks for buying all our shirts, by the way. Many bands will come in front of you and say, we have shirts for sale. Something happening to my butt? Oh, we will. My butt is leaking. All right, don't look at the butt leakage. Also, I sort of opted to not wear a cup tonight, so don't look at that either. Many bands will come before you and say, we have shirts for sale. I'm going to come before you and say we don't have shirts for sale because you bought all the fucking shirts. So there's not going to be a lot of abundance of nudity. I'm for, you know, leaving Badger State Proving tonight, which is a shame because I had my eye on a certain girl, Paul number one, and I was hoping that she wouldn't buy a shirt, you know, so she could walk around the stuff And Paul number one, you're probably saying Reverend Noah. Excuse me, Billy Cranston, the Blue Ranger, master of the Triceratops Megazord. What would such a girl see in you? You saying that? Why, I tell ya, she digs my new way records! <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
company tomorrow in the parking lot because TVA, which stands for the Boris Auxiliary, which is me and three other totally different former Boris and Springfield members, are going to be playing for a slight bit. And uh, my other band, the Smart Shoppers, who are, of course, the best looking band in the world, will be playing Resplendent in our Argyle Plenary. Tom's Daughter's band is playing, a whole bunch of bands are playing, I will come out. And you just mill around in the parking lot and nobody really gives a shit if you drink, which is kind of cool. As far as I know, don't take that advice to heart. That's not legally binding. I am not a certified attorney. I cannot advise you of your rights. However, if you do get buzzed in front of rich drinking, one eight eight, who you neighbor have? Something like that. Anyway, they're all... Hey, somebody wanted a guitar pick. Who was the guy that wanted a guitar pick? Well, whatever. I always wanted to throw a guitar pick to the audience, and I've never done it, so I threw one at Paul, and I like that easy. Anyway, there's going to be a food truck out in the back of the exclusive company, and I'm not really urbane enough to have participated much in the food truck culture. I kind of don't get it because I always run out of napkins, and I don't got to go back and get fucking napkins and the pain in the ass. But uh, the one time I did participate in a food truck culture event, I went to the food truck, and I'm like, well, what do you got? The lady says to me, can you believe the audacity of Paul number one? The lady says to me, or possibly a dude, or possibly just a human of earth, says, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you want a grilled cheese?
Passing in time for trimming and annoying. Speaking of annoying, I just said, what about the point dogs? How is the general zeitgeist? Is that a contact lens? An organ? Has anybody had an eye dislodged? Alright. People have their heads at a weird level, like when somebody mashes through, they're going to get like their head mushed into the stage. And then we're going to have to clean blood and guts. Oh, Billy Corgan's goddamn blue ranger thing and the, the thing that's orderly pissed and all like that. Well, anyway, we want to thank everybody in reverse. Let's fucking thank everybody. Call number one, why don't we thank everybody again? Thanking people is in bold. Thanks, everybody. Well said. One of the great orders of our time. I want to thank the Ergs, and I want to thank Butcher's Union. And I want to thank the fucking Lighthouse from Chewing in Wisconsin whose CDs are still available for Paul's Records. Your friends at Paul's Records. And I want to thank the Miners who were the first punk band I think me and Paul and the Boy ever saw in their lives for getting out of retirement and pulling the dust off at 43 years of inactivity. And of course we want to thank the DUIs because you know we're not fucking around when we put the DUIs on the fucking bill. Like, ooh, those guys need business. And just remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting to that point of the evening where uh, perhaps the drink has been flowing liberally. 
Sorry, I said I was going to talk politics anymore, and I said liberally, that's all right. Uh, anyway, um, just remember that DUIs lead to IIDs, and if you're on an IID, it's probably a bigger pain in the ass than an IUD, but I wouldn't know about those. But an IID fucking sucks, not that I would know anything about an IID. Ignition into electric device, by the way. So, in the interest of not doing anything wacky, uh, perhaps it's the time of the night where you might think to say to your barkeeper, Innkeeper, although you have plenty of fine craft beers on tap and in bottles, perhaps we should consider the fact that I must now say, and structure my sentence properly, Giddy Giddy Grape Juice! <laughs>
You have crushed my heart. I need a microphone stand for for my next trick. I'm stealing Rick's. I'm stealing Rick's. Sorry, Rick. I'm stealing your mic stand. Um, also, what I've done, I, I, I'm stalling for time here because we're old and just about dead. Because when we started playing, we were like in our late 20s, middle 20s, or whatever we were, and the people that liked us were teenagers. And now you freaking ex teenagers are all like 40. So, uh, I don't want to say how old we are, but we remain older than you. So, I'm not sure how many more bullets we have in the old gun. If I drop out of a heart attack on stage, I don't know, actually, that'll be kind of rad. Fuck it. That's right. But that, guy, that guy from, uh, what is that guy's name? Hey, Dick, Dick, Dick Stang, Dick. That guy from, from uh, It's a Man, That, That, That World, he's like, David, David, do you hear bells? He's like, his girlfriend was dancing to Ice Cream Man by the Shirelles. All right, fuck that. You guys don't get the reference. I don't play that. The movie was from 1963. All right, we're just going to play an easy one. However, it involves signs. This one is off our latest record, and it is written by Mr. Rick Six. He's a lyrical genius. Anyway, the song is called Philip. Somebody's touching me in the back. They're talking behind my back now. I think I might be getting kicked out of the band due to inadequate performance. By the way, I believe you left your herb CD at the merch stand. You know why? Because you're not paying attention to me when I'm telling you that you left your herb CD at the merch stand. Erica, you left your herb CD at the merch stand. Yeah, I put your name on it. Yeah, wear your hat. What, what does your hat say? Is it something? It's some sort of jail crap? Let's see. No, because you have the label on it. Haunted Museum, downtown Las Vegas. All right. I hate it because you have the label still on it. I gotta figure this out. Anyway, the song is called Bippy, and it is another. It's another song where I try, try to camouflage my lack of talent with props. There are very few words in this song. If you'd like to sing along, you could probably. Actually, you probably can't because it's weird. Fuck it, just play it. I'm wasting everybody's time on these beautiful people here. Oh, we to, and we have to do the thing where we face in one direction and the other direction. We didn't exactly practice this. Rick couldn't practice because he was on the freaking railway or airway in, in LaGuardia or whatever they are. So. Bob is here. You know that? Well, they want the heart of a heart and 
here to kind of be bought with the made of wood. But get out with pleasant blood and score a bop. These holly trees are just in front of those with bee guys who can't get butter to get the blood up and be bought those. Ho 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 ho, catch up his truck, ho 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 ho, then he must leave, ho ho ho. Hey, what's this sticky jump? I don't let me know what I do this with you. Well, I'm not in the lyric. Hey, I'll take a verse. He, he's hard, and cheers, I said I wanted to do it. We're skipping over the second verse, that verse up. Ho 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 ho, hey, what's this man's ho 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 ho, you're smoking in it, ho 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 ho, to be the badge. He's energy bomb, he drove down the lid, don't be sure how about you, but do it, energy bomb, hold on to food. Now there's one that's through the minute, so this is the second verse of the way. Oshkosh, Dino, or Green Bay, yo, he'll get the flu, it's through the mail, yo. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job, ho 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 ho. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job, ho 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 ho. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job. That's some lunch. Have you made lunch for me lately? services at home. Call number one made it happen. Of course, Tom Johnson also made it happen. I believe there's one more person involved. Thank you for your support, Mr. Cooper. Keep it holding, y'all. 